Yep, caught you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, Kieran Murray here along with my wife. Hi, everybody. I'm Sherry Murray. And we, um, we're coming back to you with another episode of Bottom of the Bottle, uh, where we talk about our wine experiences. <clears throat> Tonight, we're going to feature um, a, lot, a wine that we just absolutely love. So mm -hmm. it's not the wine, it's the winery. Um, that's what we talked about uh, at the bottom of the bottle. The reason we call it bottom of the bottle is we drink the top half of the bottle and then we're working on the second half of the bottom of the bottle while we do our video here. So today we're going to talk about Pondera. What we're drinking tonight is uh, Living the Dream. LTD. Which is, that's just got to be one of the coolest names, right? It's one of the coolest, yes. Which is actually, I think, so we actually tasted that up at the tasting room in Woodenville. And went, you know, here's awesome. the thing. It wasn't on the tasting list. That was what was really cool about this one is when we were looking at the menu, we saw the name of we had this to ask bottle for it, and we? we asked for it and they graciously opened it and let us taste it. Um, obviously, because of the name, we would have bought the bottle no matter what, just because it's super cool. But then we tasted it and it was really good. So I think we... How many, how many, of, you, how many of you guys buy a bottle just based on the name alone, like when we when we when we would see the live in the dream, we would buy that bottle without even tasting it because we'd want to have the bottle because it's just a cool name. Mm -hmm. We just did. We just uh, bought a couple bottles of uh, from Brown Vineyards or Brown Winery. We saw someone post actually in the, our Facebook group, yep. and it's, the name of the wine is called Do, Do Epic, Epic Shit. Shit, and we're like, <laughs> let's get two of those right away, stop, you know. So um, it's just sometimes it's like what's in a name, and so. Um, a name, um, a label, yeah. sometimes the really cool labels. So that was the other thing that Pondera had. They had one that's called Love Potion Number 9. And oh, yeah. I was like, oh, <clears throat> that's kind of a fun name. And then when they actually got the bottle out and showed me the bottle, the label on it is super cool. It's just all kind of uh, spellbound and witchcraftery and stuff. And it was just, it was a really awesome bottle. So, so they opened LTD. So we had, we had the love potion number nine that we yeah. loved. We had, um, this live in the dream, which is awesome. Yep. You found a Chardonnay that you totally <gasps> love. If you guys like buttery shards, cause the, a buttery Chardonnay is not as easy to find these days. You're typically finding more of the, <laughs> the, um, the ones that are, that are done in steel. But Pondera has an absolutely fantastic buttery Chardonnay. And if you can just imagine pairing that with buttered popcorn. Oh, so yummy. And then okay, last week. Sorry, anyway, we're drinking LTD. <laughs> and, then I, and then I think last week we actually cracked open Jackalope. a bottle of Jackalope, mm -hmm. which is a special release they have. And it was, oh my gosh, good. I think, I think we had one called I think Prima we, Donna. We did that one on Thanksgiving. We did the Jack we did. Lope. Jack Lope was one of our Thanksgiving And our ones. guests went, oh my gosh, this is so good. So yeah. basically all the wines we've had from Pondera are pretty... They're really good. They're really awesome. Yeah. So, um, and there's so, good people there. Yeah, oh my so, God. so let's talk about that. Okay. So let's talk about Go for it. Pondera Winery. So uh, for those of you who don't know where Pondera is, they are in Woodenville in the Warehouse District. Um, I think... I don't know that we had plans to go there. I think we, I think we went and we just started we going to some places and yeah. saw and went, let's go check them out. So here's the cool part is you walk in and. No, well, somebody recommended us to them. Oh, somebody in the group. That, that Actually, works there. Um, well, Chris. Holly did yeah. and uh, Chris did. Yeah. Um, Chris, Chris, if you're watching this, she Chris has this crazy Chris. last name, but I call her Mrs. Jones because. Is it Mar Marcilli? I, I'm not even going to try it. I don't know. So I just call her Mrs. Jones. It's I have to joke. actually drink more to actually want to actually try it. So. The, and the funny part is we've never met her nope. yet. So they said <laughs> you should go to Pondera. You should go to Pondera. And so actually when we were up in in the wine district at Woodenville, uh, we went. And that was several months back. Um, we lived just about an hour, an hour and a half south. So it's not super easy for us just to go wine tasting wherever we want. So... When we go, we like to find the place we're going to go, and they said go to Pondera, so we did. So you walk in, and the one cool thing you'll notice when you walk in is it's also a, an art gallery. It's an art gallery. It is beautiful. It's really cool. So you're sitting, you're drinking wine amongst the art gallery, which is really awesome. And then you have these awesome wines, and mm -hmm. I know right now they've got to probably do all the outdoor stuff because you can't be indoors. And um, oh, I feel so bad for the winery to have to do all this outdoor stuff right now. 
Uh, but um, here was the, the connection that I made. So uh, Sherry fell in love with the wines. I love the wines, but she was digging on all the names and stuff. And I was just doing a little background stuff. And I came across um, the guy on Facebook that turns out is one of the owners. It's him and his son and his wife. And his name is Dan Howard. And when I looked at his profile on Facebook, I noticed that he was from Montana. Mm -hmm. I'm from Montana. I noticed he was from Great Falls. And so um, next time when I went up there, I talked to him about being from Great Falls. And he was telling me he went to CM Russell High School. And I think he was there a little bit before me, I'm hoping so. And if any and of you know anything <laughs> about Montana, it's it's like it doesn't matter who they are whenever they find them and they, they cross paths. They might just as well be family yep. because it's just the way it rolls. Yep. It's it's so funny. Yep. And so that's what we totally geeked out on that, just being from Montana and how old were you when you left and where'd you go to high school and all this stuff. And and then along the way, we got a chance to meet um, Dan's son, who's the, the winemaker. Wine so yeah. all this great stuff we're drinking, his son makes. How cool would that be to have your son create all this awesome stuff that people just rave about? Talk about like I'm a just sense excited of pride, that right? my son works at a wine bar right now. Yeah, right. If he was a winemaker, oh boy, I'd be we'd a we'd like him even more. We'd if he like was a him wine even maker. more, and we'd be picking. Just like Dan a whole likes his a lot more frequently. Dan likes his son even more because he's the <laughs> winemaker, right? Um, so, so it was just really cool to connect with someone from Montana because I grew up there. My whole family's still there. Um, but now here's a cool part. This is what I remember about the last time we went up, which was I don't know a month ago or something. And and now when I walk in. And I see Dan. Um, it's just like a whole new thing. And so the last time we went up there, he was doing something, but he stopped whatever he was doing and he came to the door while we were, you know, we were waiting to get seated and he just gave me this big hug. I saw you guys were in the area. I was wondering if you were going to stop by. Yeah, right? By. <laughs> and, and so we had been posting on Facebook and we were up there and he was like, I was, I was hoping you guys were going to stop by, but he gave me this hug that I was just like, oh man, it just melted me, you know? And I was just like, that's for us. That's what the whole wine thing is all about. Yeah, there's there's a lot of wineries that make phenomenal wines. We keep saying this, and these guys make some phenomenal, phenomenal wines. Uh, but it's the experience that you have when you get to go in and to be able to say, wow, the guy that owns the winery just gave me this hug. Now, it might be different if you were women, because women are tend to be more huggy than guys do. But for me, when I'm hugging a guy, um, there's just something, it's, you know, when it's a big just a big bear hug, you know, and it's like, oh man, it just, it just melts me, right? And so... But he makes you feel like family when you walk yeah, in. Oh, it does, door. man. You just feel like yeah. family. So you walk in, this guy gives you this big hug, you get to talking, and then they're, you know, they're pouring wines, they keep coming back and checking on you and talking about other stuff besides wines. And it's just like, it's like conversation you would have over a dinner table, like where we're at right now in our house. Um, but it's like, whenever you see someone, it's like, yeah, you know, you just saw him yesterday and just picked up where he left off. And so that's that's probably the biggest thing that we love about going to Pondera is, is not the not only just the fact that the wines are just insane. I mean, this one we're drinking this living the dream. Even their staff, though. Oh, their all staff of them. treats all of them. us amazingly well. Well, they remember the thing is, us when we walk in and we're like, um, but the cool thing is wow. if you if you watch if you, you watch how they interact with everybody else. It's not just us. Yeah. That's how they treat everybody. So, um, and and that's that's spread out throughout the wine industry. But these guys do a particularly good job of it, and they mm -hmm. they um, treat people like a million bucks, and they treat us like a million bucks, and we have special connections because of Montana background, and so we've got to meet, you know, um, Dan's son and Dan's wife and the employees and the staff. And so when we get up there, when we go to Woodenville, there's so many wineries. That you want to go try some new ones, but it's but, hard. But not you to feel go guilty, see yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's so hard not to go see family, and if you're posting like in our Facebook group or somewhere that you're in Woodenville, and family finds out you didn't come and see him, you're like, well, how do you? How We're do not going to get invited for Christmas, <clears throat> right? How do you explain <laughs> that? So, it really is. It can be a. It can be difficult to. Sometimes you want to sneak away and not let anyone know that you're even going, but. That's just not us. We, when we go to like to Woodenville for wine tasting, we like to connect with people. We love to go back to the places we love up there. And but sometimes it's really challenging to go to new places. It really we, is. We literally have to go with a plan and say, look, on this trip, we're gonna do nothing but 
wineries we've never been to, and we're going to stick to that plan. So we're not going to go see anybody. We're not going to go see anybody. Right? You're all in the same boat. We're cutting, <laughs> we're cutting you all off so we go see new people. I think we've gone up with that plan multiple times. It's it never, hasn't worked. It has never worked once because no. we're like, well, we get seen in a parking lot. It, it's or so funny. We get a message. It is. All of a sudden, you see, <laughs> you go, well, I, I well, I got to go see Dan up at Pondera. I got to go see Mike over at a, at Ambassador. I got to go see. It's a weekend. You got to go see Brett over at Page. Right. You know, it's, it's like, oh man, and uh, <laughs> we don't want anybody to be mad at us. Yeah, that is the fun part about the wine industry. At least for us, you know, some people like maybe they just go want to drink good wine, and that's cool too. For us, that's not uh, nearly as special. It's almost as, like the wine is the bonus to the yeah, people. For it, us, it's the yeah, it's the connections that you make with the people yeah. who are making the wine, and and we've said this before. I think on our last video, we talked about you know there's some very very large wineries, and we never want to diss on them, but when you go to a large winery. You're not going to hang out with the owner. You're not going to hang out with the winemaker. You, chances are you're probably never even going to meet him, right? But you go to someplace like Pondera, and that's who's pouring your wine. And that's who's, you know, the, the owner's right there pouring your wine. And um, Or, you know, maybe like last time we were there, it was like, hey, have you ever met my son? And he's grabbing his son, the winemaker, to come out and say hello. And it's like... You're just, you're not going to get that at a larger place. And it's a totally different experience. It is. And I'm not, I, I'm not saying don't go to the large wineries because we love those too. Or we have memberships and they got, they produce great wine, mm -hmm. but we love to go connect with those people and um, they're just really special. So um, yeah, we've connected with a lot of people that actually work there and with Dan and his wife and his son. The wine industry as a whole just flat out has amazing people that are in it. Um, I don't know that we've necessarily really come across really anyone that hasn't treated us well. Um, and it's not, like Karen was saying earlier, it's not us. We're not anything special. Because when we go in, the way they treat us is the way that they treat everybody, everybody. else in the tasting yeah. room. Um, it's just, it's a phenomenal feeling to... Um, walk into a tasting room, walk onto a winery, and really be treated as family. And yep. and that's that's a big hats off to to the wineries for making people feel that way. And it's, and it's just probably I'm gonna go out on a limb and say probably now during these COVID days mm -hmm. that that probably even happens a little bit more because the crowds are smaller. Yeah. So if you have a large group of people in a winery, like you know, say last summer. Uh, not this one, but the one for you. So 2019, 2019. Um, it's really hard to connect because you have so many people in the room. So if you're the winery owner, winemaker, and you have a packed place all the time, it's harder to make those connections. Uh, this year, with COVID, there's far fewer people. And so you're able to make uh, deeper connections, which from all the wineries that I've uh, talked to so far, they actually like that part. And the people that are, uh, that are going into the wineries are more serious wine drinkers. And so the numbers are staying pretty strong and consistent um, for, for a lot of the wineries, unless we get to the point where we're just shut down completely. But um, they, it, yeah. like, they, salts they, like, they like the fact that it's smaller groups so they can make those connections and they're really taking advantage of that and they're making some some really deep connections. And so, you know, this I year for us, wine tasting- are gonna be better. I do too, and for, for us, yeah, I, I haven't enjoyed what we're going through this year with a pandemic, but I sure like having smaller groups of people in a winery so that you have, uh, that you can meet, you know, someone. And so right, right now, um, because it's it's slower, I mean, they're so grateful. All the wineries are so grateful when you go in and support them and you do a tasting and you buy a bottle or two or 40. Um does that, did They're you just, just give me permission? No, I didn't. <laughs> I was talking about what you do. Um, oh, that's so, right. I don't need your permission. So that's just really cool. But so so we highly encourage you, you know, especially through this pandemic and beyond, is get out there and and um, meet these people and support the wine industry because I'm pretty sure you all know and love it. And it's going to be important that you keep buying a few bottles here and there from them throughout because it's uh, they need our help with that. And uh, But definitely go up to Pondera up in the Woodenville Wine District. They're easy to find. They sit on this corner and they're pretty close to the front, but um, go see Dan. 
tell Dan we said hello. If you if you went in and told Dan something about you you heard he went to Charles M. Russell High School in Great Falls, Montana, he'd probably say, You were talking to Kieran, weren't you? Because probably no one else knows that. They don't think they don't think to look at the profile or they don't even know what that you means. You know what? I dare somebody to go do that because I just want to see his response. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so for all you lovely folks up at Pondera, here's a cheers and a clink to you guys. We love cheers. you guys. For everybody else, go up there. Go say hi to Dan. Go say hi to uh, his son and his wife and um, all the staff, uh, Holly and Chris and everybody. They're just so awesome. And um, hopefully we'll run into you there. Uh, I'm not sure when we're going to get back to Woodenville. But hopefully it'll be soon. So we need to actually we need to go back and get some more gonna, Pondera wine. Well, we've got some pickups up there too. So. Oh, we have we have we belong to the club. So <laughs> you wanna, if you want to be cool, join the club, right. and then you always have this stuff that you can always share with a friend. That's a, that's the best part of sharing with friends. So, Absolutely. hey, wherever you guys are tonight, we love you. Thanks for taking the time out to watch again, and uh, hope you're having an amazing day. And uh, this clink is cheers to you. Love cheers. you guys.